Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Shreya Savijay. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 6th of April. Russian Foreign Minister holds talks with Indian counterpart in New Delhi. Multilateral meetings continue in Doha ahead of Afghan Peace Summit in Turkey. A Nepal may see spike in COVID-19 cases in June, warns Health Minister. And now for all the details. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov held extensive talks with his Indian counterpart Esther Shankar in New Delhi on Tuesday with a focus on various aspects of bilateral ties and preparations for the annual India-Russia summit. Both the leaders also discussed prospective and additional manufacturing of Russian military equipment in India. Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov on Tuesday held extensive talks with his Indian counterpart S.J. Shankar in New Delhi with a focus on various aspects of bilateral ties, the ongoing Afghan peace process and the preparations for the annual India-Russia summit. In a joint conference after the talks, Lavrov said Russia and India are discussing the possibility of additional production of Russian military equipment in India. He did not specify what kind of equipment, however, officials from both countries have said their governments have been discussing for some years the possibility of making Russian military helicopters in India. В рамках концепции дела и в Индии и в рамках концепции самостоятельной Индии. Так что. This comes as the United States has already warned India not to buy the Russian S-400 air defense systems under a deal struck in 2018, as it could trigger sanctions. India made an initial payment of $800 million in 2019 and the first set of missile batteries are expected to be delivered towards the end of this year. Voters in four Indian states of Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Assam and West Bengal and the Union Territory of Puducherry cast their ballots on Tuesday in elections seen as a test for Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government. The elections were held amid a surge in coronavirus cases in the country. Four Indian states of Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Assam and West Bengal and the Union Territory of Puducherry went to the polls on Tuesday as people voted in the assembly elections. The popular states of West Bengal and Assam have emerged as key battleground for Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party or BJP which is looking to extend its national domination. PM Modi and Interior Minister Amit Shah themselves campaigned for the crucial polls as they are seen as a test for the ruling BJP. We will vote a good decision, then we will have our growth, our family growth, and then we will have our society growth, and then we will have our country growth. So that's why we should understand each vote and vote. Today, the people of the country Bithiana, Jacob Pertan Bogunodu, Urusam Shuila, LDF in a Territra Vijim, General Samanikum another, or apart. Polling on Tuesday took place amid surge in coronavirus cases across India. India, as of Tuesday afternoon, reported 96,982 new COVID-19 cases and 446 deaths in the last 24 hours, as per the Health Ministry's data. In news from Pakistan, Pakistani rushed to get inoculated in the first round of commercial sales of COVID-19 vaccines that began over the past weekend. This comes at a time when Pakistan is currently offering free vaccines to frontline healthcare workers and people over the age of 50, but the drive has thus far been slow. And last month, the country allowed commercial imports by the private sector for the general public. 
Hundreds of Pakistanis rushed to get inoculated in the first round of commercial sales of COVID-19 vaccines that began over the past weekend. Pakistan is currently offering free vaccines to frontline healthcare workers and people over the age of 50, but the drive has thus far been slow. And the last month the country allowed commercial imports by the private sector for the general public. The first round saw the commercial sale of the two-shot Russian Sputnik V to the general public for about 80 US dollars for a pack of two doses. Despite the cost, a number of centers offering the shot reported long queues, with some in Karachi waiting in line for close to three hours. So as soon as private may open, that's why we saw a huge line for people who were very excited and uh, very looking forward to getting the vaccine. So, uh, yeah, these volumes were not initially seen in the government setup. Probably because initially they opened only healthcare workers. Ke liye open kiya tha. Usme initially apprehension. Very happy, very happy and thankful. Because now there is travel mein bhi vaccination ke requirement ho, and generally normal life return. Ho. So, very happy to get it. This comes as the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Pakistan has crossed the 696,000 mark with at least 14,924 associated deaths. Moving on, locals in Gilgit Baltistan have alleged corruption in a green initiative by the Pakistan government accusing that plant adequate for the illegally occupied region do not reach people and there has been embezzlement of funds. Locals in Gilgit, Baltistan have alleged corruption in a green initiative by the Pakistani government, blaming that the plants granted to people in the illegally occupied region are all dry and lifeless. A local politician, Malik Shah, held a press conference and accused there has been embezzlement of funds of the Clean and Green Pakistan initiative, under which crores of rupees have been allotted to Gilgit, Baltistan, but the concerned officials have over the years given contracts only to their near and dear ones, and plants adequate for the region do not reach people. Shah further said that this process has been going on for the past two to three years and urged that responsible officials should be suspended. Locals have long alleged corruption and ignorance in the system has become a major challenge for the growth of Gilgit Baltistan, leaving its future in dark. In news from Afghanistan, Afghan peace negotiator Fawz Yaqufi has reported progress made in multilateral meetings over the past few days for the upcoming conference in Turkey. Kofi said some agreements have been made on the context and scope of the Istanbul conference in their talks in Doha over the past week, which included representatives of the Afghan Republic, the Taliban, the UN, the US and Qatar. The Afghan negotiator informed preparations are being made on the context of discussions, principles and values that would be discussed in Turkey, as well as coordination among countries and organizations. Meanwhile, senior Afghan political leaders and government officials are reviewing over 25 peace proposals, including that of the presidential palace, to make a unified peace roadmap for the upcoming conference in Turkey. The Turkey conference is expected to be held this month. Moving on to news from Nepal. Nepal's Health Minister Hridayesh Tripathi on Monday warned that the country may witness peak of a second wave of coronavirus in June if people continue to flout precautionary measures. The Himalayan nation has been witnessing a surge in infections since mid-January after earlier declining from October 2020. Nepal may witness the peak of a second wave of COVID-19 in June if people continue to flout precautionary measures, Nepal's Minister for Health and Population, Redesh Tripathi, has warned. Addressing a meeting of the House of Representatives on Monday, Tripathi said this assessment was made on the basis of a recent surge in infections across the nation. Nepal has been witnessing a sudden spike in COVID-19 cases from mid-January which had earlier started to decline 
from October of 2020. अबका दिन में जन स्वास्थ्य का मापदंड हर को पालना लाए प्रभावकारी बनाने सर किए न बने संक्रमण बढ़ दे जस्ट असार में और को उच्च बिंदु में पुगने सकने देखें जा Nepal has so far reported 278,210 confirmed cases of coronavirus with 3,036 deaths so far. There were currently 1,832 active cases across the country till April 5, according to the Health Ministry data. The Health Minister further added that the nation has been alerted about a sudden rise in cases in India, with which the Himalayan nation shares an open border. With heat wave beginning to tighten its grip over parts of northern India, the sale of earthen pots has increased across the region, with several people preferring them over water stored in refrigerators. Crippling heat waves, drought and water scarcity usually grip India during the summer months of April to June. The sales of earthen pots have increased in parts of northern India, with heat wave beginning to tighten its grip over the region. Customers who prefer to store water in pots instead of refrigerators were seen looking for earthen pots for their homes amid rising temperatures in Agra city over the past weekend. With the onset of summers, authorities regularly issue advisories on how to keep cool, including advice to drink water frequently find shady spots and use fans. नुकसान करता है इसलिए मटके का पानी दिमाग में ज्यादा फायदेमंद होता है इसलिए हम मटका खरीदने आए थे Soaring temperatures during summers in India also lead to numerous casualties for humans as well as animals. Possible regions for the rising temperatures range from global warming to greater urbanization leading to taller buildings and diminishing green cover. Women in a village in India's northeastern Manipur state are struggling to preserve the years-old practice of procuring salt through a traditional process that is fading with time. Some decades ago, locals of the village discovered salt springs and converted them into salt wells that are almost 45 feet deep and 6 feet wide. Women in India's northeastern Ningel village are struggling to preserve the years-old practice of procuring salt through a traditional process that is fading with time. Some decades ago, locals of the village situated near northeastern Manipur state's capital city of Imphal discovered salt springs and converted them into salt wells that are almost 45 feet deep and 6 feet wide. Women procure Ningel Thum salt by fetching saline water from the well and boiling them in vessels. The water, after being evaporated, leaves a white crystalline form of concentrated salt, which is then cooled down to produce circular slabs of salt. Earlier, over 30 women were involved in the process, but as the amount made by selling the salt is very less, they shifted their occupation to farming and only six women are left who are doing this job currently. Ningel is the only village in the whole state of Manipur to preserve this ancient custom. The indigenous salt was once presented as a reward by the kings to the braves for their heroic deeds. However, it lost its worth with time. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.